Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. We've got a bit of a sad contender today. This is a Denon PMA 770. It's about maybe 1985, 86. It was uh, brought to me, given to me, and you know the story. They say, well, you can fix it up and you can sell it. Well, they're not really worth much. So it's more of just a kind of resurrection video. This was at another shop, which is now defunct. Uh, no longer in business. I know nothing about this. I haven't even powered it up yet. So we're kind of going to go. Uh, we're going to go through uh, the steps to evaluating a piece of equipment and uh, turning it on without blowing it up and uh, seeing what it really needs. He said it does not work at all. Uh, but again, I haven't tried it. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, get a meter, pop the top, and look for any uh, signs of death. All right, so here's the inside of this beast. You can definitely tell that something was leaking on this for a long time. I don't know if you can see all that water staining there, but definitely, definitely water intrusion. So far, no signs of a blown up amp. Let's see, shed some light on it here. Your typical 80s push pull amplifier. Gosh, just look at all the little barnacles and crusties on there. <laughs> yeah, this thing was a little moist. But you know something, the main fuse isn't blown. You can see there, the element's still alive. So it couldn't have had some hard failure, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'll take some measurements and check the output transistors for shorts. Uh, if you've got the typical TO3P style stuff like this, from left to right is a base collector emitter. And you want to take your uh, ohmmeter, set it on the diode function, and if it starts with an A or a B, you would test for junctions by putting the uh, negative lead on the base and the positive lead on the emitter and the collector. And you should get about mm, 0.6 around that reading. Uh, if it starts with a C or a D, you'd put the positive lead on the base and the negative lead on the emitter and collector and look for about 0.6. Uh, if you get a short between the collector and the emitter or the base and emitter or base and collector, the device is defective. And furthermore, if you get a short between the base and the collector, Everything upstream of that transistor has probably been hurt or blown up. So I'm going to take some measurements here, and if everything checks out, then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we didn't find any shorts. One more thing you can do is you can take your meter and stick it on ohms, and you can measure the uh, collectors of the transistors to ground and make sure there's no shorts. We're obviously getting a very high reading there of about 900 kilo ohms. as the capacitor is charging up, so that's good. You need to, the other thing you can do is you can take the uh, uh, meter here. Let me see if I can do this with the camera in my hand. I'm not sure if I can. Uh, excuse me, folks. You can touch the bodies together, which is the, also the collectors, and you can see if you get a short. If the t you touch positive and negative to the collector of each one, uh, measure across the two if you get a short there, then probably one or more of your amplifier components is defective. Anyway, this uh, passes all the preliminary stuff, so let's get it on the bench and put a dim bulb tester on it and see if it fires up. Alright, so here we are. We've got our uh, dim bulb tester there. It's always good to have a ballast in front of something about 100 watts. That way if something goes wrong you don't have this uh, massive smoke and fire show, so let's just uh, turn it on here. That's a good sign. Oh, the uh, protection relay fired. Also a good sign. And the uh, bulb's not lit, so that tells us that it's minimal current draw. So uh, let's see here, let's take some measurements. 
and yeah, my workbench is filthy. I just kind of threw everything on the to the side here. I was working on this terrible NAD T753, which is a pile of garbage, by the way. Don't ever buy one of those. Massive power supply problems, and it's almost impossible to get to everything. So if we just take a look here, we've got minus 46 there. And plus 46. I smell something getting hot. So here's our regulated supply. Oh, the smell right now. It's like a combination of hot metal and uh, kind of a funky plastic smell, but I don't see anything burning. Maybe it's just all of the crust that's built up on the board from being under water. Definitely water spillage everywhere. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything. And the bulb isn't getting brighter. Usually if the bulb lights up, you know it's drawing some current. Not doing much of anything. Let's, uh... It's actually running. I don't know what that input display thing is supposed to do. It's not lit up, but I really don't care. Uh, let's hook something up to it. See what it does. All right, so we got our scope hooked up. We got a signal generator hooked up. I'm gonna turn on the speakers here and see if we see any DC. No, nothing there. Oh, we got something. Right channel. Lots of distortion. Look at that. Hooey. Left starting to wake up there. That's an awesome waveform. That's supposed to be a uh, sine wave. Oh, look, we got something. That's a little better. Switches are just so crusty. You can just feel them. I don't know if you can hear them scratch when they press them. Ugh. Garbage. Interesting. It's trying to work. Look at that right channel though. We see that little oscillation there? See, I can't position that shit. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can... Uh, oh, wow, look at that. We go way up there in frequency. Look at that response. That ain't pretty. What the hell's happening to that? Definitely uh, something in the amplifier there. I didn't like it. It's twitchy. Interesting. It's frequency selective too. Like if I go down in frequency, it kind of, I mean the distortion becomes less as you go down. Like if we only go to like 300 hertz, it's actually okay looking. Sorry about that. As we go up, we start to see that oscillation there. 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, 6K, 7K. Wow, that's just... And then you got this thing up here. You've got a spurious oscillation writing on top of it. Keep moving the camera up. I'm not paying attention. Crazy. Tone controls only have minor effect. Loudness uh, sure pisses it off though. Interesting. Let's uh, 
Spray some contact cleaner in these pots. Especially these input selector switches. This is bad. Alright, let's get some deoxin to these. Deer Keg Laboratories. Your new sprayer sucks. I'm really not happy with this thing at all. The straw is very hard to bend. The flow control isn't as good. Uh, I just go back to the old style. It was so much better. I just don't like this at all. That's the one thing I've always been unhappy about with keg products is their, their sprayers. Their pump ones, the heads come off of them too, so that complicates things. When you lose the head for the pump and it, you need it. And let's uh, just start hosing things. Don't really care at this point, the board's a mess. There's our record out. Work it, baby. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my trace there. It's like disappeared. All right, so we're just going to work these buttons a couple times. Hope the cleaner does its job a little bit. My father used to have a PMA 777 that had uh, these switches go bad. They needed to be cleaned about every six months. And if you didn't use them, God help you, it would make it worse. All right. So at least we're... All right. So now we've got sine waves with the distortion. Uh, and the only reason why you don't see it so bad now is because I've got the, uh, the frequency turned down again. got this mode switch let's clean the mode switch that's this guy down in here all right that seems to clear things up I'm gonna clean that cartridge switch back there I don't even know if the funnel stage works yet don't really care Oh, and we have a uh, clipping here too. Look at that. See how that right channel clips there? Let's see if that's load dependent. Let's see what happens when we lift the ground on the load. Doesn't get any better. So that tells you that it's before the driver stage. If you remove the load and the distortion still remains, it's before the driver stage. If you remove the load and all of a sudden the sine wave looks nice and pretty, You've definitely found a problem in the driver stage. All right. So uh, that's where we're at so far. Interesting. Yeah, that right channel's crummy. The left one kind of sort of works. That balance pot isn't great. Uh, but that's really not our biggest concern right now. So uh, let's let's look around. It looks like they've got this set up as two bridge amplifiers, which is weird. Because you've got an NPN and a PNP for each one. Let's get some light on this. Not camera exposure. There we go. They've got a weird way of wiring this all up. Uh, let's go down here. Yeah, I've got a 2238. So really now we're going to go into some real troubleshooting because we've discovered 
what it really went in for service for, which was that uh, horrid distortion you see, which is not load dependent. So now we have to look and see uh, if the signal is distorted before it gets to the amp or after the amp initial stages. And this is a, you've got these FET input devices here, which then fires into this class A thing. And then you've got your AB drivers down here and your finals. It's hard to tell if they're running it as a bridged amplifier or if they're just staggering the components for some reason or if they've got some weird configuration. Uh, so what let's do here, since it's not in the driver stage, we're going to poke and prod a little bit down below. I'm looking at this 2SC2824 here. Nine tenths on the base, four tenths on the emitter, 41 here. So it's on, it's about five tenths across it, it's on. And then we've got this, that's a pre-driver it looks like, because you've got an identical one, just TR14, which is over here. Uh, and since this is the PNP, this is probably the side that's going to be affected. You guys can't really see down in there. This is the guy I'm talking about right here. I'm trying to get down in to take a measurement. I'm going to take my little fiberglass rod here and bend some stuff out of the way. And see if I can take a measurement here on this guy. So here, we've got the same 9 tenths of a volt here, 3.6, or 0.36, which tells me there's 6 tenths across that, so that's more on than the other one is. That's your PNP side. Uh, and then we've got this one here. This is also, it looks like a pre-driver. Oh, they've got a for each one, so this is nine tenths, four tenths, so this is on two. And you've got an identical over here, which I'm gonna try to get to. And let's see, this is in the way. You got three tenths on the emitter, nine tenths on the base. Okay, so all those little pre-driver things are on. That's good. And then you've got these little Class A drivers before them. There's a 2SC 1941 over here. And what do we got here? Minus 38.5 on the base, minus 39 on the emitter. So I should have about minus 1.2 here. And minus 0.9. It's a little under biased. And then you've got this one here. And you've got 38, 39, and 9 tenths here. So this one is under bias, but it's on. It's symmetrically. Oh, that's interesting. I must have touched something. Because now look at our waveform. Interesting. Hey, we got a loose connection. After poking around in there, now look at it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten K. Yeah, we got a bend with clear out there now. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, time to pull off the bottom cover on this guy. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. We're reaching the 20 minute mark, so I don't know if my phone's gonna cut off or not, but last one I had did. So let's uh let's patch this into the next one. All right, so with the uh, bottom off, I'm kind of starting to confirm my theories here. Because immediately, my attention was drawn to those little Class A drivers that I was messing with. And I don't know if you can see there. Look at the solder brakes. That one's pretty wild. Come on, focus. Yeah, it doesn't want to. Yeah, those ones are definitely crusty. 
there's a bunch of them on this board that ain't great. Let's uh, highlight these things. Just really crusty. A lot of this board is really in bad shape. Like that got really hot and look there's definitely some corrosion there on that part. Wow. How did the servicer not see this? I mean, he obviously tried to resolder a few things, but just a few. That one, that's weird. He's resoldered this stuff here, but right next to it is broken loose. It's right next to it. Why don't you get that too? Just wow. That's just incompetent, because it's obvious to me. Why not just do the whole damn thing? Oh, all right, I'm going to get some alcohol here and scrub this board and then we're going to re-solder a bunch of this stuff. All right, so we at least got the crust cleaned off the board, but then there's this, this right here, hard to tell whether that's, no, I guess that's just gunk. For a second there I thought it was uh, corrosion that ate the foil trays, that happens too. So, yeah, just, it's, it amazes me that the obvious was not taken care of. Here's more of that. Make sure there's nothing that was destroyed underneath. All right, I'm going to uh, resolder all of this, all these bad connections here. Now we, I'll stop the camera for now so you don't have to see me do all that because I know that's boring. But we'll do that and then uh, we'll fire it back up again. Alright, so we, uh, we cleaned up the soldering on the board. And uh, we cleaned up the top board a little bit here and got all the garbage off of it. Uh, so let's plug our signal back in. And let's see where we're at. As far as a working machine here. Plug it in, plug it in. Alright. Click. There we go. Tapping on that board. Doesn't change anything. This relay is kind of bugger though. If I wiggle the relay, you can see the channels fluctuate. I'll burnish that. Okay, so we, yeah, we turn it up. It draws current like it should. Doesn't distort even out to, uh, let's see, we're at 10K now. Why don't you want to sync up? Uh, 70k, never mind. Doesn't work on 70k very well. 10, 12, 13, yeah. It's clean out to uh, 40k. I think we're alright. Got a little bit of a phase shift there. Oh, there we go. Just wasn't locking in. Alright. Looks happy to me. Let's take it off the limiter and see what it really does. Alright, so we're off the light bulb now. We're going to crank it up and see what it does. It's right up the clipping there. Alright, back off until it doesn't clip. Let's see, AC volts on our left channel. 29. Right channel. 29. It's almost 100 watts. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's about 90 something watts into 8 ohms. Not bad. Uh, it's working okay now. Let's uh, check and see if our phone works. We'll turn down the signal a lot here. And then we'll go into our phone 01. These RCA jacks need to be burnished for sure. All 
Interesting. Phono no worky. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think our phono works. We're just getting a giant AC hum there. Maybe I got it plugged into two. Yeah, phono doesn't work. Interesting. That's where the mass population of the fluid spill was. Make sure I got the right one. Let's try Phono 2 just for the hell of it. Uh, nope, still nothing. And then, so let's take our scope here and make sure that signal's actually getting in here. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, and I got signal there. I got signal there, it's coming in. All right, so now, let's see what voltages we're getting on the uh, phono preamp. You got plus 15, and you got minus 15. That's a live. You got plus 15 and minus 15, sorry for my hand there. Yeah, minus 15 and plus 15. Oh, we got voltages. Interesting. So, something not working there. It's just a big, scary hum. It's like a pure sine wave, though. Very interesting. Doesn't change when I put the inputs in or out. All right, so phono doesn't work. There's something else going on there. And we can try to follow. I'm gonna guess here these, uh, let's see. That's the signal I'm reading on one of the phono lamp amps. That's weird. Every single pin is that garbage there. Yeah, it can't be right. And that's just more junk there. And then it goes through these filter networks here. Maybe it's just trying to sync on that. Let's Get that out. Nope, still junk. But I've got symmetrical voltages here. So probably what happened, since this this area was the concentration of the fluid spill, I'm guessing that these op amps got hurt. Because so I've got no phono functionality whatsoever, even though I do have uh, regulated voltages there. But given the fact that this is a rust bucket, I don't really think it's worth messing with. So, uh, I think realistically, I'm probably just going to button this one up and just leave it as a regular amplifier. And just, if you want to attach a phono preamp to it, you get another $20 thing. So, I'll just probably use this as a shop amp or something like that. But anyway, you got a chance to see some basic troubleshooting. Uh, if this was worth pursuing, I probably would mess with the phono stage, but to me, it's just not worth it. Uh, too much effort to take it apart, and the machine's not worth anything, so I can't really resell it after investing all of the time. But anyway, that gives you a brief rundown on how to examine and troubleshoot an amplifier and do some minor repairs to get it working. So hopefully this is useful to you in some aspect. Thanks for watching the video. More to come soon. Well, it appears my curiosity got the best of me. I did some further troubleshooting in the phono stage and found that the uh, 4559 down there, which is your initial op amp stage, was not working. Although it was getting voltage, signal was going in, but I wasn't getting anything on pins 1 and 7, which are the output pins. So I just changed it on kind of a whim. And as you can see now, I've got uh, my phono stage back. And as I go down in frequency, the it goes up. 
and up in frequency it goes down so the RIAA curve is working uh, so yeah cool I'll finish cleaning this up and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like I'll put back together alright so we uh, we cleaned up the soldering on the board and uh, we cleaned up the top board a little bit here and got all the garbage off of it uh, so let's plug our signal back in and yeah, let's see where we're at as far as a working machine here plug it in plug it in all right click there we go tap it on that board doesn't change anything this relay is kind of bugger though if I wiggle the relay you can see the channels fluctuate I'll burnish that okay so we yeah we turn it up it draws current like it should doesn't distort even out to uh, let's see we're at 10k now why don't you want to sync up uh, 70k never mind doesn't work on 70k very well 10 12 13 yeah it's clean out to uh, 40k I think we're all right got a little bit of a phase shift there oh there we go just wasn't locking in all right looks happy to me let's take it off the limiter and see what it really does all right so we're off the light bulb now we're gonna crank it up and see what it does right up the clipping there all right back off until it doesn't clip let's see AC volts on our left channel 29 right channel 29 it's almost 100 watts yeah it's about 90 something watts into 8 ohms not bad uh, it's working okay now let's uh, check and see if our phono works we'll turn down the signal a lot here and then we'll go into our phono one these RCA jacks need to be burnished for sure interesting Phono no worky. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think our phono works. We're just getting a giant AC hum there. Maybe I've got it plugged into two. Yeah, phono doesn't work. interesting that's where the mass population of the fluid spill was make sure I got the right one Let's try phono 2 just for the hell of it uh, nope still nothing and then so let's take our scope here and make sure that signals actually getting in here sometimes it doesn't yeah I got signal there I got signal there, it's coming in. All right, so now let's see what voltages we're getting on the uh, phono preamp. You got plus 15, and you got minus 15. That's a live. You got plus 15 and minus 15. Sorry for my hand there. Yeah, minus 15 and plus 15. Oh, we got voltages. Interesting. 
So something not working there. It's just a big scary hum. It's like a pure sine wave though. Very interesting. Doesn't change when I put the inputs in or out. Alright, so phono doesn't work. There's something else going on there. And we can try to follow. I'm going to guess here these... Uh, let's see. That's the signal I'm reading on one of the phono lamp amps. That's weird. Every single pin is that garbage there. Yeah, it can't be right. And that's just more junk there. And then it goes through these filter networks here. Maybe it's just trying to sync on that. Let's get that out. Nope, still junk. But I've got symmetrical voltages here. So probably what happened, since this this area was the concentration of the fluid spill, I'm guessing that these op amps got hurt. Because I've got no phono functionality whatsoever, even though I do have uh, regulated voltages there. But given the fact that this is a rust bucket, I don't really think it's worth messing with. So uh, I think realistically... I'm probably just going to button this one up and just leave it as a regular amplifier. And just... All right, so here it is, all cleaned up. I uh, took some 320 grit to the case and just went crazy on it. Tried to take out as much of the imperfections as I could. And it turned out pretty nice. All of the sides of the machine look clean and uniform. There's no more pitting. There's no more rust. I cleaned up the faceplate best as I could, but it's still got some dirt and marks on it. I also uh, finished the amplifier setups, burnished the contacts on the relay and burned it in for a little bit to make sure that it was happy. So this one's done. And uh, we'll test the waters and see what the market bears on this one. But kind of a time investment. I really don't like large time investments. This I edited the video to sh kind of show everything in a progressively quick manner, but it was really about a two to three hour investment. So it's probably not going to make me anything as far as profit, but I just kind of like tinkering with these things to see if I can bring them back. Uh, this one turned out to be a lot more straightforward than I anticipated, so that's good. Um, I've got a, a tuner from this series which should mate with this nicely. So we'll stick the two together and see what happens. I've got some other things like this that are kind of rusty and junky that maybe I'll make videos of too. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, more stuff to come soon, including installing a composite AV input on a vintage television. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.